Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node Red Project, here with the notes for the 2.2 release. Now while this isn't the largest release we've done, it does contain a number of useful enhancements to the editor. First up, with the main search dialog, you can quickly find nodes in your workspace. But if you wanted to find multiple things, you'd have to type in the search again each time you open the dialog. With this release, it now keeps a history of your searches, making it easier to repeatedly search for the same thing. With Snap to Grid enabled, nodes with hidden labels, such as the link nodes, can now be aligned on either the left or right-hand edge. This makes it easier to get everything to line up in the workspace. When deleting nodes from the middle of a flow, it's always been a pain to have to reconnect the wiring behind them. We've added a new option when you delete a node to have the wiring automatically repair itself. This is done by holding the control key when you press delete. You can also now detach a node from a flow without deleting it, the reverse of what happens when you drop a node over a wire and have it spliced in. We haven't assigned a default keyboard action for this in this release, but you can assign one yourself in the keyboard pane of the settings dialog. Search for the detach selected nodes action. You can select multiple wires by control clicking on them, and when you select multiple nodes, we now highlight any wires between them. This can make it easier to follow a flow once you have selected all the nodes. We've added the ability to remove wires by slicing through them. You do this by holding the control key and dragging the mouse with the right hand button pressed. Now, unlike a lot of the keyboard actions we have, it's not possible to customize the mouse actions in the editor. But based on feedback, that's something we'll certainly look at in the future. Moving away from these wiring tricks, if you have set output labels for a subflow template via the appearance tab in its edit dialog, the editor will now display those labels whilst you're editing the subflow template. This makes it easier to keep track of which output is used for. We've added a number of predefined environment variables that allow a flow to make use of the IDs and names of the nodes, groups, and flows. For example, in this function node, you can use the following code to use the name of the function node and the flow it's on. When I run this function, you can see the message in debug has those values included. Now, when I copy this function to another flow and I rename it, now when I trigger it, you can see the message in debug reflects those new values. Updates to nodes in the palette include the JSON node now attempt to parse buffer objects if they contain a valid string. The TCP client node support TLS connections. And the WebSocket client node now lets you specify a sub-protocol when you want it to connect. That's all we have to share in this release. Our next release is scheduled for the end of April and will be Node-RED 3.0, a major version bump, as we'll be dropping support for Node.js 12 that will reach its own end of life. And it's an opportunity for us to consider other bigger updates to the core of Node-RED that we wouldn't otherwise do. Now, we have a few things in mind, but if there are any particular features you're interested in seeing or contributing towards, please do jump into the discussion forum and let us know. Bye for now.